live with the Lessons Learned podcast with my friend Chapelmon. We weren't uh, live yes uh, last week, but we are live today. Hopefully, we won't have many drop frames as we had last time. Uh, crossing our fingers. Uh, so we're doing that. And um, so if you were watching our friend, friend of the show, friend of the program, uh, Frame Loss, well, I'm afraid that we're going to have to uh, leave it there and start with our own program. So welcome back to the program, uh, everybody. And, um, yep, there we are. Just Yep, we're on. <laughs> and we're on. Um, so once again, welcome to Lesson Learned Podcast uh, for everybody who's watching. Um, and uh, tonight we're going to be talking about game journalism i've been wanting to talk about this for quite a while especially given some recent news and some videos that just pop up on youtube or stuff like that's like maybe we should tackle that and uh, i think we're gonna tonight we're gonna talk about uh reviews uh but before we do that Yeah, before we do that, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about other news uh, in the offing. Uh, let's start with the fact that uh, the developers of Dishonored are saying that they are going to take a break. Uh, they um, essentially saying that, and we heard this about other programs before, we heard, you know, we're going to take a break, maybe a year or two to develop the next Dishonored. Although Dishonored was never really a yearly um, developer. You know, program wasn't something that was got released every year, but they did release a couple of games back to back to back. So um, there's that. And um, and yeah, I mean, we are um, looking to see what they're gonna do about that. Always a break. Uh, you you sent me that uh, video about Angry Joe complaining mm -hmm. about. Uh, Madden. <laughs> Madden. And I think that's a point across the industry, right? That uh, you do have these yearly releases and there's really little or no change between them. And at the end of the day, you know, what's the point, right? Yeah. And I was just watching a video on um, player apathy when it comes to how the industry it tends to have these cycles of um, they seem to sort of flood the market with certain genres of games and then they kind of tend to cycle them out and start with something different mm -hmm. until players get start developing apathy to that then they kind of start a different one or maybe bring back an old franchise that they haven't touched in a while uh, it's kind of it can get kind of like that at least the, at that time they're kind of spacing it up but at the same time it seems kind of sinister <laughs> it's just like we're gonna milk this franchise until it gets uh worn out and then we'll start milking another one and then when that franchise starts milking we'll get another one or maybe we're back another one we've milked dry but maybe now people are like oh hey i'm nostalgic for that yeah i mean it's it's been a while since we had uh, a few of these franchises uh they get run into the ground basically people just get tired of it and um it's it's not good it's not really good um bethesda and this is a there's a couple of things about bethesda but this is going to be we're going to be talking a lot about bethesda this this week because oh boy <laughs> yeah they've been doing all kinds of things uh first and foremost bethesda first uh well early, earlier this year's week tried well didn't sue but they threatened to sue someone in order to and in order to block a resale of a second hand game um according to uh polygon the legal notice clamps down on sales of new games from unauthorized sellers uh essentially it boils down to the fact that someone put on the amazon uh, store uh a Essentially, a brand new game. Uh, it was in the wrapper and everything, and they were selling as new, right? And they said, "No, no, you can't do that." Mm -hmm. Now, legally speaking, and this sort of rankles me because they know this. The lawyers have to know this. The, the 
the Bethesda and really Cinemax, who are the you know the, the holding company who owns Cinemax Entertainment, um, they know they have no leg to stand on. But I think they want to. They're using both the power of intimidation, right? This is you know big corporations versus an individual, right? Who just trying to sell their game. And I mean, if this person just pulls it out of Amazon and sells them out of like literally open the door, somebody comes in and they they give them the game, then they're not going to know about it. Right. Yeah. So it's they know and, and they wouldn't have any legal recourse. And we talked about this before. We talk about the idea that um, video game companies feel that they are entitled to the profits of games um, from, you know, from these second hand sales and they're they're not they're absolutely they're not entitled to the profits of the physical uh copy whether i bought it at the store and then turn around and sell it to someone else or mm -hmm. or anything like that right this person wasn't um they talk about warranties again it's they made it very clear that this is a game that they own, that it was in the wrapper. That would be between yeah. them and whoever bought it, right? And yeah. Amazon as as a the, the sellers, those warranties. The idea of having a warranty is like, first of all, you can't even warrant I mean, if there's a warranty problem, I would go to the seller, whether it be this individual, Amazon or eBay or or whoever, right? So again, yeah. that doesn't apply. I would go to GameStop. You, Games, if I bought this in GameStop or any store, Bethesda would never know about it. Mm -hmm. So the idea that this is uh, an issue is, again, ridiculous, but yeah. here we are. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they have pretty much a pretty flimsy uh, justification, and I still don't understand why. Like, why really are you opposed to someone who's, who bought the game brand new so you already got your profits there. And then he later decided that, you know what, I'm not going to play this game, so I'm just going to go ahead and resell it. Yeah. And, um, so I don't understand where their, where their issue is. They say that it's because, Shout oh, we can't guarantee that it's actually a new game. And, like, I don't know. I guess they assumed that he might have, like, you, like, taken everything out, played it, and then, like, put another shrink wrap on which is like again you could also but you also that's the same issue you could potentially have with other resellers that you sell how do you like uh GameStop for instance is pretty notorious about that they always open their games and I'm not sure if they still practice this but they used to usually with their new games they like take them out of shrink wrap and take all the little ads out of them and stuff Mm -hmm. And when you buy it, like the case on the shelf is is an open empty case, they'll usually like just put the disc in the game in the case, and then there you go. Yeah, and an argument they make is like, oh, he's saying that it's brand new, but it is brand new because if, yeah. if I'm selling, it's like it's like buying a, a a car. If I say or any other physical good, and this is about physical good sales, we're not talking about the copyrights on the context of the disc. We're not talking about copyrights about copying what's there and and making copies and selling like it is, which usually it's copyright violation and warranty violation. We are talking about buying and selling a physical good that was legally acquired. Mm -hmm. Went to the store and they bought it and just simply they just didn't play it, right? Oh, we have a problem with them saying this new. Well, it is new. If I say it's used, that devalues the, the, the item. And not only that, actually, I would be lying because it is in the wrapper, right? It's yeah. I mean, and I think it sets that precedent. And it's a thing that the software companies in general and particularly video game companies have been doing it for years. They don't think... Even back in the days of disc with the floppy disk with cartridges or like that, they've always and movie and movies and other industry try to do the same thing and they have failed consistently to do so in American courts and many other courts around the world. To say basically, oh, because we sell images, we sell, you know, recordings, we sell essentially data, that that data entitles us to have the maximum of rights, right? Versus whoever buys it has minimal rights. If this were to happen, essentially what they're trying to do, and this happens when you know happens when you're doing digital distribution, right? You have one little right, essentially a license to use, which that, that's the best idea for them. Uh, ver and they have all the other rights: distribution, sale, resale, and all that. That's why they love digital distribution. 
not because actually it's cheaper, although it is cheaper. Um, I mean, other reasons why. So this is one one instance where you have that. And I think there was another instance, and, and Jim Sterling actually talked about this, of a game that um, it wasn't Bethesda, but it was, um, I think it was a Sonic game, where you bought a physical copy, but only like a third of the game was there, and you had to download or the, the rest of it. I check on that one. Um, yeah, my Jim Quisition, Jim Quisition, uh, uh, Sonic game, physical, physical copy. Let me see if that's. Uh, Well, there was a news about that recently, and uh, and I'm thinking I'm gonna. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. If you heard that little uh, chime, I was checking it nope. out. Um, basically, um, okay, um, Bethesda, Bethesda, Ubisoft. Um, IGN, Spy okay, it actually was the Spyro Rignati Trilogy. Oh, Acti yeah. And it was Activision. I'm blaming the wrong company, but this stuff, you know, runs in <laughs> many corporate, corporate situations. So um, if you bought the Spyro Rignati Trilogy physical edition, right, the mm -hmm. physical copy, you yeah. only get about a third of the entire game. The rest of the features have to be downloaded. Yeah, so the uh, first game's on the disc, and the other two games you have to download digitally. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, oh yeah, we, you need to do that. It's like, but why would you do that? Well, of course, because, you know, it's, again, it puts more control on their side, right? Um, to compare that to other shenanigans as well, we had, uh, Ubisoft canceling, uh, Steep, which was a snowboarding game on Switch. Hmm. The thing about it is that they canceled it without telling anybody, and nobody found out until they somebody tweeted at them. In other words, if people pre-ordered that game and they never <laughs> said anything, I'm guessing that they would have kept the money. Probably. <laughs> so they would have stolen the money, whether it was one person or a thousand or ten thousand pre-orders, whatever. That's that's a lot of money, you know. Was steep even? Was it actually pre-orderable? Yeah, it was. It was. It, oh. it, it was. In fact, it took a week for it to be taken down from the Nintendo store. Uh, so it, you know, it was pre-ordered, and one of the reasons oh. why you should never pre-order because this this can happen, right? And they didn't feel any obligated to tell anybody. <laughs> I'm like, what the shit? Ah. Uh. Oh, Ubisoft. <laughs> yeah, but copying on um, Medesta. But that's on the other hand, Medesta is saying, well, if Sony doesn't want to do crossplay, then we're not going to give us give you our card game, which is um, the card game based on the uh, Elder Scrolls, which is going to be around for a year. This, uh, this, I feel like I should care a lot more than I do, but I, I can't help myself. <laughs> I, I don't really care all that much. First off, it's it's a, the game. I'm cynical, and the game seems like it's a Hearthstone ripoff or something, a Me Too kind of game. And second, it's like, why this game? If you're make, if you want to really make a statement, why this game and not like something like Fallout seventy six? Which again was the point that I think uh, Jim Sterling brought out. It's like, well, and he explains it very well, and I think I agree. Is that it's it's a low, it's a way of sending a signal without taking any real risk. Yeah, which it, it kind of defeats the purpose. You're not putting your money your money where your mouth is, essentially. Mm, yeah, which is where Sony would go. Oh, okay. Uh, and at this moment, Sony has the advantage because they're the platform holders. Mm -hmm. Right, and you don't want to. What still is the most uh, influential platform in this generation not have a game in there? That's hmm. millions upon millions of people of possible buyers, right? Uh, you know, the card game is a spinoff. Yeah, it isn't a main game. It's there to sort of soak up that much more money, 
as much as possible. So I don't think anybody's gonna really care if people don't if people already own it and they're playing it. Fine. I don't think anybody was waiting for it on on um on 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 the PlayStation. And I don't think those are those games even popular in consoles. I, they mostly seem like a PC thing. I don't know the. I saw that they uh, a month or two ago they released um, Fallout Shelter for the PlayStation Four. I'm like, why would you put a mobile game on on a, a console? I guess it's to push sales of Fallout seventy six, just like they did. I the, guess yeah, that's the only reason why. Why not, right? And it also is loaded with microtransactions. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's one reason for it. Uh, but. Uh, but aside from that, I you know it's more it's more advertising. That game was it's more like revenue generating self re- self generating revenue game uh, advertising. It's like making it an advertising yeah. that actually makes you money. I guess because like I I assume there'd be a even corner that really tiny market where someone doesn't have a smartphone but they own a PlayStation Four. I guess because when that that. I played Fallout Shelter when it was first announced before Fallout 4. I think it came out right before Fallout 4. I played it for like a week or two, and then I kind of lost interest. I couldn't be bothered, even though it was in my pocket, to pull it out and play a little more on it. And it's like, why would anyone do that with the PlayStation 4? Saying, uh, I'm going to go in my living room and go play this mobile game on my on my TV. I guess somebody out there probably is. Yeah, I think that probably is the reason why. Uh, on another news, and I think this is sort of tied into this as well, is that um, uh, Bethesda is not going to sell Fallout 76 through Steam. Hmm. Uh, they're going to do it through their store. Yeah, they're, and I was just looking at their store the this afternoon, and I'm like, what? Like what is the their store? I I was trying to make like maybe I should make an account. Apparently, I had one already. <laughs> I didn't realize I had one. I think you have to have one if you like if if you have Fallout Four, you have to have an account with them. I think I don't have. But the thing is that they've been pretty big on on Steam. Oh, sorry about that. It's a someone. Oh come on, guys! I I know you're streaming. Thank you. Um. Uh, and of course, that dropped me a couple of more frames. Um, I think that um, it's interesting that they're doing that, even though Steam has been incredibly big for them for a very long time. I mean, they've been one of the biggest supporters of Steam in recent years. Uh, Skyrim has made a lot of money on Steam and stuff like that with the workshop and all that. Steam has been very supportive of, 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 of Bethesda. So I don't know what what's the move here. Uh, maybe because they haven't been able to sell paid mods as effectively through Steam as they thought they could. There be a backlash. Hmm. What, what are your thoughts on that? Maybe I. So that's why I I kind of went to their website today because I was expecting that like so are they going to make sort of like their own launcher like Origins or hmm. or UPlay or something or make their own like corner steam like thing application and mm. I, that's uh, that's what i thought there i think that might be their future plans later it might this might be like the stepping stone to towards that yeah it could be and that's a move that's a general move that a lot of um uh, you know big de- developers not developers but publishers uh, are doing and bethesda as a brand is moving to be more of a publisher right having more games and stuff like that Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, man. If that's the case, I I don't want to have yet another client on my computer. I mean, I have Steam, I have Ubisoft, I have this. I have, I don't I don't want any. I don't. I no no. Um, and for all the problems that Steam has and has a lot, still has a lot of problems, it has one strong point: that's convenience, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what now? Doom Doom Eternal is going to drop in December twenty eighth. I was looking forward to that, uh, but apparently that's the if this it might also be um, sold through their shop. I mean, are they going to move all their uh, games to to their own platform, a la a la Origin and EA? 
Well, it, it, right now it seems more like it's uh, almost like GOG before they had their applications. Like maybe you just download it straight from their site and you download an installer and there you go mm-hmm. with maybe like a CD key. I suppose, yeah. Uh, but eventually you want a client because you the idea is to have that sort of that funnel for, you know, for the quote unquote ecosystem, which I hate that term, but there you go. It is what they want, so. Mm. Yeah, I, I'd say give it a sh- like. Ooh, let's buy something and give it a try. But after the whole like them not wanting to sell people selling new games as new or mm. secondhand new games as new, well, maybe I sh- I think I'm probably gonna stick to buying their games in physical copy used for now on as yeah. a screw you to them. I suppose you can or order them from Amazon or something like that, but. Even if you order them nowadays, what, what you get is a, a download code anyway. Or eBay. I've yeah. bought I've bought a few EA games <laughs> brand new on eBay for dirt cheap. Yeah, that makes sense. So, but from one hand, Bethesda is saying, "Yeah, we're we're gonna sue, uh, you know, sue people. We're gonna we're gonna move our our stuff to our own store." But hey, crossplay, crossplay is very important to us and we need yeah. everybody to cross play and, and all that uh also another news is i think that they were going to sell abilities in um in fallout 76 as a form of cards yeah but not nah, they they supposedly claim that all their microtransactions are their all their microtransactions are purely cosmetic the the skills are la- you essentially can earn booster pack cards that give you perks and those perks require you to have certain special stats to be able to equip them. But they say that, no, we're never going to sell those as microtransactions. However, we've seen in through not, not through any Bethesda esque. Uh, actually, I don't think any game Bethesda has done this where like they say, Oh no, these microtransactions, X microtransactions will never happen to where they're later patched in, mm-hmm. sort of like uh, the division did. Yeah, it's a possibility. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it, but you can already see that. Hmm. Even if you're not selling it now, and you m- may never later intend it, it feels like that's what they intend. They it was built like that. Like at one point, hey, we're gonna make it to where uh, these you can buy booster packs to get abilities and stuff, but then maybe later in in, uh, development, like last year during the entire Battlefront kerfuffle, maybe they changed it to be like, nope, that's purely, you purely earn it through leveling up and whatnot. Could it be that, I don't know, maybe uh, Steam, I don't think Steam gets any revenue from microtransactions. They get revenue for whatever they sell in their store, but... Not no. from in-game microtransactions, so that's not I a reason it, for them to switch to their own store. I think store. they do. I I think they might. Well, mm-hmm. I'm not sure Steam specifically, but I'm pretty sure oh, like yeah. uh, PlayStation Network and stuff and Xbox Live, they do make some money off of that. Especially since you have to go through their own um, buying the money or pretty much converting it into whatever points they use so i i'm not sure about steam i would assume so unless like those their their online services don't go through steam maybe Well, yeah, I'm looking at Steamworks documentation. It says in-game purchase requirements. For any in-game purchase, you'll need to use the microtransactions API so Steam customers can only make purchases from the Steam wallet. You can learn from more how you complete this motivation. Okay. Microtransaction complaint to, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, so they, they, oh, they certainly, money. yeah, they sue the early money. Now we have a reason why they're doing it. They're they're trying to cut out one middleman. Yeah, they want they want those they they're, they're thinking that that fall uh, Fallout seventy six is gonna be their new, uh, you know, big game, right? It's gonna be their yeah. game as service, and they don't want. I mean, they they already have to deal with Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo if it ever comes to Nintendo. They don't want to deal with Steam as well. 
Uh, so yeah, that's the reason right there. Hmm. At least that's a very good reason in their mind to do it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, money, money, money. Hmm. The 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 Elder Scrolls Online doesn't go. Does that go through Steam? Uh, I think so. I mean, they, every product they have, it. If you if you sell it through Steam, you have to use the Steam client. Mm -hmm. In fact, what happens is that you can use multiple clients. Like for example, if I buy, I've got Fallout uh, Far Cry Five, right? I bought it through okay. Steam. I have to use Steam client, and I also have to use Ubisoft's. So I have to use two clients at the same time. Okay, yeah, it is on on a. It is on Steam. I, does the Elder Scrolls Online have microtransactions? I have no idea. I think it does. Uh, it's free to play, so it, it definitely has to have microtransactions. Otherwise, you know, how do you well, actually? Getting, yeah. Oh, they're telling me that it's like ten dollars. <laughs> I'm like looking it up right now. Oh, okay. I thought they went free to play. Oh. Oh, it's free for uh, the next eight hours because they had like a free week, I think, the 9th through the 15th. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it's a standard edition is $10 on sale right now. Yeah. Normally 20 mm. Uh Oh, yeah. Buy crowns. There we go. Ah, ha, ha. So that's their online currency is. Oh, and it's it really? I didn't realize it was subscription based too. Yeah, subscription based. Um, but they, even with subscription based uh, MMOs, which is an MMO, MMOs yeah. have had microtransactions for ages. So I'm not surprised that they would not have it there. Uh, I mean, remember, Bethesda was the people that charge you 10 bucks to fix the ending of Fallout 3. I still remember Bethesda. And they were the ones who were going to sell you horse armor. So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, moving on from Bethesda, we go to Riot Games. And there's two pieces of news with Riot. Uh, one of them is that uh, a former employee of Riot basically said that the, the environment in Riot Games was extremely toxic, uh, according to, um, to what was shown in the note. On mm -hmm. the other hand, because there's two sides to this, um, the um, Riot Games seems to be having problems with Tencent, which is the Chinese holding company that owns Riot Games and many other games, because League of Legends is still selling a lot of making a lot of money, but it has been you know it's gone down from its peak of well how many millions were playing that game. First of all, it has a lot of competition, and second, people are moving away from MOBAs, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Fortnite and all that. In fact, I think we talked about the week the week before last, we talked about uh, how Fortnite might be eating not only into the survival game industry thing, but also into um, other areas. Although, and usually I'm, I will be careful linking to, to these guys, but there is uh, an extra credits video and i'll put the link to it be below um i'll put it on the chat because i think that on uh, steam sales they did a video about that uh and and let's go let me go to um to um to that in a moment because it was a recent video and they talked about how, for example, um, the, the way the analysis that they had, and it was called, um, okay, Steam, what sells? Uh, this is the video, let me link to it. For a and one of the things they found out was that the numbers, you know, we have to think that it was one big, big game and then everybody else. And mm -hmm. it, it almost, it, the way it's done, it's that they tend to uh, pair up. Uh, that's a link to, uh, to the video uh, on, on link. Um, they tend to pair up. So like you have, or they cluster, like if you have two or three survival games that are very that are equal popular, they all have basically the same population. 
MOBAs the same, you know. So the tendency is, and this was a brief window they got. I don't know they something about microtransactions and whatnot that they were able to get this data concerning how. Uh, do I want meme? No, no, thank you. I do not want meme. Um, <laughs> and um, but welcome to the program, nonetheless. Um, if um, if you have the situation where um, you know. It's very interesting because what happens is it's more of a market share kind of thing. It's like literally, the sh you know, you may have a game that is slightly ahead, but everybody seems to be jockeying for that position. So they tend to cluster around and having very even numbers, which seems to suggest that people sort of jump back and forth, at least on online game. Like they have multiple communities like, okay, I'm playing Fortnite, but also PUBG, but also playing this other thing because these are all the games I like and therefore that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so that that was interesting, and I think people should watch that video, you know, for some of the insights. Although some of the information is very, very sketchy, but that's mm. one part of Riot Games. So on one hand, and Riot and, and the people in Riot Games to to make it clear, they put out a statement saying that they were ident were looking into and identifying areas that were problematic, and they want to create a a great environment for their work, et cetera, et cetera. But this is yet another piece of those news from from video game design that leads me to the question is that should we, I mean, we're talking from the outside, of course, but is it time or is it really happening that, and it should be happening at some level, are, is the way the video games are made, should, should there be a significant change in how they are made, the business practices, the development, design, and all that? Because... If you're creating high pressure, toxic environments, you're literally breaking the very people that are, you know, you're, you're killing the, the goose that is laying the golden eggs, mm -hmm. right? And that doesn't benefit anyone. We on the outside, we talk a lot of trash and we're going to get more into that in a moment um, about this stuff, but we don't, we want better games, right? We don't want yeah. wage slaves. We don't want people to go like, I'm literally dying for the art. No, 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 dude. I want you to have a nine to five and go with your family and friends and loved ones and breathe and not have a coronary at 25 or 35 or whatever. I don't, I don't want, I don't want you to die to give me my entertainment. That's, that's, yeah, that's not, no, not a thing. I want to be, especially, related. especially if you were somebody who, especially if you died over something like, uh, Aliens, Colonial Marines, or something. Oh Jesus Christ! That would be a tragedy. Yeah. And yes, people get a lot of flack about this stuff, and uh, we talked about the, talk about talk about flack, and talk about being on the outside looking in. Uh, top Twitch streamer Ninja uh, answered a, qu a series of questions. Got an interview by it, I believe it was uh, IGN. Oh, yeah. And one of the questions was, "Would I think it was would you stream with female streamers?" And his answer was, and this was a very divisive answer because you can sort of feel where people are both sides of the question. Um, and I hate to be golden mean about the answer I'm going to give, but there you go. Um, that he does not stream with women. Essentially, and I'm paraphrasing, and I forgive me if I'm, I may be getting uh, talking, you know, uh, putting words in his mouth. Essentially, he does want to avoid the pressure and or rumors that comes from streaming with women. Right, that streaming with anybody else, particularly women, he's a married guy. People will talk, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. On one hand, on a personal note, kind of thing of this is my channel. I set my own rules. It is perfectly understandable, and Twitch mm -hmm. seems to agree that yes, he can set his own rules. On a more, but on the other hand, especially talking about Twitch and how Twitch, uh, you know, sells it as everybody. And sorry, Twitch, I'm going to talk about you guys. On your own platform there you go uh everybody bleeds purple and streamers you hit all the streamers etc cetera, etc cetera, as well as the, some of the ideas that are behind this sort of uh you know the idea of hey um you know you don't stream it's like they seem at best uh old-fashioned and i'm being generous about it right i guess and the idea like oh well I can't, you know, I'm, I'm taking too much of a risk if, if, if I stream with someone from the opposite sex. Yeah. Like, even oh no, the idea we, of them, uh, positive sex. Yeah. Yeah. We might have like some flirtatious 
we might start making flirtatious comments and that might raise rumors and I'm a married man. It's like, okay. So it's like that, that couldn't happen if you were with a guy. It's like, it's not like, Oh, Hey, you're streaming with a, with a gay man. It's like, what if I start becoming flirtatious? Oh no. People are going to start talking about you. Oh my God. That's the worst thing in the world. 